I made a low ball offer on these two dozers uh, because, to be honest with you, I really didn't want to get involved with them. Uh, to my dismay, the owner said, that's great, uh, get them out of here. My name's Tyler. You guys are watching Diesel, and I'm the, the proud new owner of this uh, Terex D600D and this Liebherr 731C, and they gotta go. I paid $2,000 each for them, uh, and I still feel like I overpaid. <laughs> First thing we gotta do is we gotta get them out of here. If you guys can see or hear around me, the scrappers are here today, everything's going. Um, so kind of time is of the essence. The T-Rex, that's no problem. That'll drive on a trailer. Um, but this Liebe here, it won't even roll. I tried to push it with the T-Rex and I just skidded it. That's uh, basically quintessential of a hydrostat machine. So we either have to pull the final drive motors off so it'll roll freely or try and fix it in place to see if we can get it just to drive on the trailer enough if it's puking fluid, so. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check this hydro fill here. Um, Cause this will tell us maybe what actually happened with this machine. But well, that's a good sign it's holding pressure. And so I, I left a post in the heavy equipment forum and basically the guys in there said that the reservoir for the hydro blade and the drive is the same. So if we had a blade leak, like one of the cylinders or lines, that could cause it to not drive. And then if we had a drive system leak, that would cause the blade not to work. The other thing the guy said was pull this screen out and you'll know right away. He said if this is filled with shrapnel, he said then she blew something. If not, it might just have a leak. So that looks pretty good. That's just little normal shavings. So it looks like to get that out, we need a screwdriver, a snap ring, which I don't have. Oh yeah. This is gonna be impossible. All right, maybe I don't need to do that. That's good. All right, so this looks fine to me. I would pretty confidently say that we did not have a major explosion on the hydro. I think if we did, we just see like shrapnel in there. So that's good. So now I think, uh, let me put some fluid in it and we'll see if we can see where it comes out. All right, so apparently the whole cab tilts back. I've been looking around, I think this is it right here. This is how to raise our cab. So let's see, I can see a little right there through that slot, looks like a hydraulic cylinder. One thing I don't know is what the, uh, what the reservoir is for it. Is it the main hydro reservoir that's empty? I'm thinking this is the suction from probably our main hydraulic reservoir. Then these are our two out to our cylinder. So if you have a bad hydro leak and you need to service it, you're up a creek without a paddle. I guess we're just gonna donate five gallons to her in the hope she doesn't come puking out. Another thing that's interesting to me is the stuff in here is red, like ATF. So, Either that's wrong, or they're running red ATF through the hydraulic lines for the blade, which would be pretty odd to me, but it's definitely possible. Well, I don't see anything just pouring out anywhere. Yet. hear like a little bit of pressure like maybe it's trying to pump air all right I got a full bucket in it now oh wow all right I got some pumpage now um but it won't go so I'm guessing that's because we got to take some bold flues to get this to go up so the guy in the forum said there's literally one guy in there replied to me so one guy in the world knows how to work on these 
he's had two bolts up front and there's one of these on each side so that's probably as good a shot as any whoops that was me I didn't bring my impact today and I'm just like extremely outmatched. So that one I can get with the bar. And the other side I have almost out. But there's some guys here today. Um, and one of the guys said he helped me lift the batteries in. So since this thing starts so easy, let's just throw the batteries in. I'll just start it up for two seconds um, and we'll see if there's fluid spilling everywhere. Um, and I'll just try and bump it back and forth quick. We'll see real quick what's going on with it. All right, that was easy. But the problem is the guy said, you want him up there? And then he just lifted him up here by himself. Made me look like a little, you know what. Hopefully she fires just as easy this time. And hopefully it doesn't make that big of a mess. Oh, I don't have the key. All right, take two. Here, trying. Yeah, wow. All right, sweet. Let me see if I can see where it's leaking. Boy, I don't see it pouring fluid anywhere. I actually just hear it whining. Let me see. Well, I would think we can roll around a trailer at this point. steer it with the other machine, huh? That's all right. I can fill it up with fluid and we can do a bunch of shit with it before we actually put it on the trailer. I just know she's not dead. Blade won't work, but it might never. Wow, that is splendid news. No, it did. Oh, it did? Yeah. So? Well, I mean, it doesn't sound, I, it won't steer. Okay. So I'm wondering if one of the drive motors crapped out, but the other one can at least limp it on a trailer, you know? Okay. All right, that's a good place to leave off. Um, so I think now we can at least get the truck scheduled. I'm thinking we'll be able to get it on. Maybe I'll just do one truck at a time and we'll try and load the Lee Bear. Um, and if we have any issues with it, this will still be here to load it. So cool. Um, not a complete waste of a day. Actually, it was a great day. So there's one thing I want to look at on this Terex. Um, that one fluid cavity that was empty. So I'm not sure if it's empty because there's like a huge leak or if it's just empty because it's low on fluid, right? But it looks like it's that one back there. So I think what I need to do is next time we come, I'll just bring five gallons of Ultimate Tractor Fluid. That should be good for there. And uh, maybe one of those bucket pumps that we can just pump it up, fill it up, and go from there. So cool. All right. I'm going to pack up and head home and get the truck scheduled, and I'll see you guys back here uh, when it's time to load them and move them. All right, so we're moving them tomorrow morning. Um, and this blade is way too wide. So let's see if we can get that pin out. See if we can maybe knock on this. I'm looking at it now. It looks like if we take those off, I would think it wants to tip forward, but it could also want to tip backwards. So 
Typically, you'd probably do this with the blade on the ground, but the blade is not on the ground. So I'm wondering if I could get a chain around there up to the center somehow. Oh yeah, we can do that. And then I could also get a chain from this one so that we can still pivot it, but also the blade's not gonna move on us, hopefully. First, we gotta get these pins out. Which is always easier said than done. The blade's 12 foot 8 wide. We gotta get it down at 12 foot to legally move it. This already kinda sucks. this side. Good thing we have one massive piece of machinery right next to us. All right, so the first thing with this one, there's one reservoir, I believe it's for the steering clutches and the final drives and stuff in the back. Uh, and that's plumb empty, so I'm gonna fill that up first. That reservoir back there is filled up. I put six gallons in it, that's all I had. It actually is like at the low mark on the dipstick, so that's good. She's not completely out of fluid. So now uh, we gotta get some juice to this old girl. I have two batteries in my truck. We just gotta get them in there. Hey, look at that. Someone emptied the canoe for us at least. But look where all the water went. I'm not trying to break my back today. So I'm wondering if we can get a board or something. Just slide them on up. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. <laughs> So happens I had a trailer ramp in my truck. Pretty proud of that. That was relatively painless. All right, so I remember from last time, the negative was on the disconnect. Positive goes to the starter. And then this, this jump row is all we had. 24 volt system. I think we can fire this one up. Let's check the fluids again quick. But if she sat for however long before, she should be fine this time. So, provided this one starts, which it did last time, great. I'm gonna start this one, and then we'll let it idle for a little bit. And what I wanna do is I wanna come into this machine, and I wanna see if I can pick the blade up. So, you guys have seen this blade is chained up, because we have hydraulic issues, right? So if I can pick it up, get some slack in the chain, and then let it down, then at least I'll be a little safer angle on it. Then what I can do is I can use the other dozer, come and push in on these pivot pins, hopefully knock that loose, um, and then we can just use the other, the Terex, to uh, push the blade in and angle it, right? 
super easy, super simple. Nothing can go wrong. Oh boy. Are those batteries dead? I'm trying to think now. Let me at least see, I guess. All right, let's go over on the other side. All right, there's a zero percent chance, but. Uh, actually, it's kind of moving. Now, of course, that's in the way, but we knew that. Let's see if we can get the other side. I'm thinking I could just push on it with the dozer, get that out. This pin's further out, anyways. That's all right. All right, this guy should be kind of warmed up now, so I'm going to see if I can get around to the other side and push that pin in hopefully to uh, allow me to get the keeper pin out.
victory. All right, now let's see if I come away if it drops out. We're gonna move you guys a little further away. I don't feel like buying a new tripod today. Push on a little bit. So we've achieved half of our goal. Now we gotta spin it. So I think I'll just grab that and spin it until that one is gonna be close to the back. It's gonna be really hard to do with just one person, but I think we can get it. Might be overthinking a little bit um and honestly so we're moving the dozers the trucks will be here at 9 a.m tomorrow morning um so i have a little bit of time in the morning but i'm pretty nervous about you know making sure everything goes right because it's a thousand dollars a truck and they come from where we're going so if they drive all the way down here i waste their time and they go back i'm out two grand and i don't move the dozers right so that would kind of suck um but I'm thrilled right now because I know the T-Rex is going to drive on the trailer, no problem. Um, all I had ever done before was just move that back and forth a little bit. So I always had in the back of my mind, like, does it really move, you know? So that's good. Um, and if this thing's going to get on the trailer, it's going to have to drive on the trailer. So I'm thinking what we should do is just, last time when we were here, we put five gallons of hydro in it. We were kind of light. Let's put another five or maybe 10 gallons in it and just see. It's going to be a lot easier for me to maneuver this with this dozer itself. Um, let's see if we can get her to move because if this doesn't move and I'm like, I can't drive this on the trailer then at least I can call him and just say, Hey, send one truck in the morning, you know? So last time we put five gallons in it and I think it's like a 75 gallon system. So that was literally a drop in the bucket. The oil in here is red. So. I know I'm probably supposed to use some sort of transmission fluid, but guys, I'm just trying to get her on the trailer today. She's gonna need a lot more than two buckets of fluid. <laughs> Let's see what that got us. Probably nothing. 
I'm like 12 gallons of add in and it's still not on the window. This thing's just laughing at me. I've put in so far. So far I've put in 15 gallons of fluid and I still can't see it on the side window, but it should be enough to at least get it out of here. Jeez. All right, I know this one's gonna start fine. Hopefully she moves a little better. Yeah. Didn't hook up the batteries. All right, we're good. I have to send the remediation crew out here. Well, either way, it's not super disheartening, but I wish. Stupid blade, I mean, 
I just think she's seized up. I just think I need a long, a long ways before she'll do what we want her to do. So, fortunately, I'm a dead adult and I don't have cutting torches. So, I think I will bring the angle grinder in the morning because that's gonna, oh, maybe the saws all too. That's gonna have to work. But I can probably put the T-Rex on the blade and tilt it forward. Man, I almost just wondered if it's like some electronic issue or something with the blade. Cause I saw he had a voltmeter in there, but who knows? Nevertheless, it'll drive itself on the trailer. Dang, that sucks to have to leave that blade. All right, let's pack up. I'll see you guys in the morning. What a beautiful sunrise. And what a beautiful gym. So, uh, it's like 7.40 maybe. Trucks will be here in about an hour. I ran over that tree yesterday. So right now, Jim is getting out the extension cord. I'm gonna get the angle grinder. I'm gonna try and buzz those bolts. We have truck power today. Yeah. All right, where do you want them? Put, just put them in the back of my truck. I'm taking them with me. Oh, you're taking these home? Yeah, so I can get my core charge back. Gotcha. We got some heavy iron today. Whoa. <laughs> it's the only reason right he with his me back. Around. I knew it. That's why he brought me along. Just wanted to use me for my body. <laughs> Quite literally, yes. That is 100% why I needed help. <laughs> All the bolts are loose. I guess now I'll take these out for the hoses. Man, what a beautiful day. Phew. Uh, so the only other big thing, probably manual labor wise, is we just have to try and get as much dirt off the machines as we can. Did you bring just, a shovel? I completely forgot a shovel you. today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Literally, I, I, One of the objectives today is moving dirt, but I brought no provisions for doing like, such. <laughs> See what we got. So you are going to go right here. If we can. All right. Cool. I'm going to tighten this down and then we'll fire the girls up. It'll warm up for a little bit. We'll see if we can get this guy away from here and then we need to, uh, raise it up. Oh, she's not bashful. Wow, that's so smooth. It's a V6 Mercedes diesel. No, really? Yeah, like what? Wow. Yeah, you can kind of see it. German engineering, eh? It doesn't sound like a four cylinder. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Oh yeah. You're dragging like logs. Yeah. Uh, Probably be in our best interest to get this oh, thing picked up. Look. She's bashful. 
Should be honestly good enough to get on the trailer as long as I can get it out of here. We might have to take that skid plate out of there first. Um, and then this one, it's good to go. I tracked her back and forth a little bit, try to get some of the mud off. But man, look at that thing. Look how she cleaned up. That thing actually runs pretty good. Goes through all the gears, steers left and right. It doesn't have pushing power, it seems like. So let's get the Lee Bear ready to go. down this morning. Wait, I think it's gonna blow up in my face. Uh, nope. On the way down this morning, the heater core started leaking. 
There's enough fluid it, in there. It's, it's still going to be an issue. It's going to leak anyway. I don't care if it leaks. I just don't want to run out of coolant. My heater core started leaking. The truck was fogging up like no other. But Jim had a good idea. He said just vice grip the hose. If I just vice grip the supply hose. Should be okay. It's should not gonna, help, right? Yeah, it's not going to pump it through. Hopefully the lead bear's got enough in her to get on the trailer. Load off your chest. All right, it's kind of a tight turn, so the Lee Bear, I didn't know if it would drive up there. This one I know will, so I'm just gonna hike this up to the road. We'll load it up there. Take care of unloading him and get him on his way. So 
You guys are probably going to hear from my dad for a couple minutes. That'll be great. Um, and I will see you guys up there when we unload the Terex. Hey, were you expecting a delivery? <laughs> I think we have a delivery coming. Well, look at that. It's Lee Bear 731. That might be the closest thing you get to that John Deere 750B you always wanted with the hydrostat. And why it looks about the same size. Sprockets look good. Huh. Oh, this side has the new chains on it here. That looks a little better. He told me it had new tracks on one side. That looks good. Oh, yeah, this one's got a good Looks real nice. Oh, beautiful. Now you see how the pins feel. Oh, man. Wow. Look at the feet on them sprockets. I know, there's no wear on those pins. Holy shit. That's one of the best pieces off that ever German engineering of all those. I'll tell you what, I'll let them, uh, <laughs> I'll trade this for a storage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll you. throw in a golf car too. <laughs> oh, that's priceless. You're just fine. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I told you, you wouldn't have any issue oh, with it. Yeah, you didn't even have to hardly hit it. No, this thing runs fantastic. Yeah, that's a long break. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, no, it's, the, it's the left one. It's a, it's a German machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I never thought of that. Tyler said T-Rex. I got, for some reason, I thought of that Euclid because uh, T-Rex bought out Euclid. I was all excited. I thought we were getting one of those TC-12 Euclids with the twin uh, 671 Detroit diesels. That's what I want. But well, we'll see. Doesn't look too bad. Wow, look at the tracks and the sprockets. Holy cow. Wow, they even painted the engine. Yeah, look at those tracks. Son of a gun, that guy, he had, boy, he had good taste, that guy. Coming down. Oh. Well, you know. Oh, my foot. Yeah, man, that looks nice. Sprockets look like new. Tracks look good. Any wear on them? Boy, I don't feel any wear, that's amazing. All right, I just pulled up. Let's go stick the camera in my dad's face, see what he thinks. I guess, yeah, he unloaded the Lee Bear, no problem, so that's good. How much oil you put that uh, Lee Bear? I put, I put 15 gallons in oh, it. Oh, you did? It seemed like yeah. it was slowing down over there. Oh, it hardly moves. Oh, yeah. really? So I don't think, I think the issue with the Lee Bear is the blade doesn't move. Because um, that blade would not move at all, I uh, mean. I think that was maybe why he parked it. Yeah, I, it, it didn't. It, once I got it over there, it wasn't moving that well. I think it's. Uh, I think it's just low on oil still. Still low on oil. Um, but I think there's an electrical issue with the blade. Uh, I don't think the blade's moving. Oh, boy. 
Uh oh. Uh -oh. Did we lose our oil? Did we lose our oil? <laughs> yesterday and half of today and then on the way tracking it out to the road it just started leaking so
pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. Boy, this uh, this feels this feels funky. I don't see any problem right in there. Yeah. Boy, does that feel slop? Does that feel slopped out? Yeah, it definitely does. I love the reverse switch. You see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. It works. So is it? I don't know. Oh, so your safety's on and down. Right. So it won't move until you pull up on this. Right. right? So I'm. Boy, what is that? I'm wondering it's if the weird. blade issues are electrical. Because he's got be. his voltmeter in here. Yeah. Stuff like that. So we'll have to look around and see. But I think on this one, um, I'm not super worried about the leak. I think the leak, like what we looked at the beginning of the video here, was I think the leak is the suction line coming from the main hydro tank down in there. So eventually... We'll have to flip the cab back and we'll see. We were talking, maybe we can do it with the loader or something. But for now, um, I'll just have to find a, a manual for it. It'd be nice to get the blade. We gotta move that up and then get the blade working. And then I think we could probably fill it up with hydro. It doesn't look like it's leaking horribly. And at least just push with it and see. I mean, you guys saw it going across. It pushed with the bridge there a little bit and it looks fine, so. But I mean, I really, I think it leaks. I think it's got slow leaks. But I don't see it just pouring out fluid, you know. Saying it's got like a leak that's debilitating okay, where you couldn't run it, right? I didn't see anything at all when you were going. I didn't see anything dripping no. whatsoever. Did you sit no. in this? What? Did you sit in this? Did you sit in this? Yeah. Look at the padded roof. Sound. Sound deadening. There's sound insulation under the cat under the floor too. There's a Jeez. bunch. Jesus, Jenny. Yeah. Well, it's smooth like when you're driving over here, man, it's just quiet. I know it. <laughs> I know, it's like a Cadillac. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. I got a, next thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go hook up to the trailer right now and bring it down. See if that guy will load the blade if I give him a, a few bucks or something on um, the chain. Get everything up here and then I will dive right into probably on the Lee Bear. Uh, how figure out how to get that blade to work um, and then get the cab up and really start to look at it do some maintenance on that and this one obviously i think that one just needs some basic maintenance we're a little more familiar with this right because it's like all the other machines we have so we can probably just dive right into fixing that torque converter and changing some fluids and stuff so i don't know you know all in just because i paid four thousand for the two dozers total uh grand each to move 500 each in batteries um and then i probably have 500 dollars in fluids so i know it looks like it's two four thousand dozers but or two dozers for four thousand dollars but you're really probably pushing eight thousand dollars for two dozers right and then you dive into changing out hydraulic fluid on one of these is going to be another you know thousand dollars or something so it looks like a great deal but you really struggle to make money on this kind of stuff unless it's you know you guys supporting us um so i think there's a reason why they were probably parked and why they were sold for scrap so but whatever it's going to be fun um better than sitting at home and watching tv right so thanks for watching guys i hope you guys enjoyed uh, this part two and then from this point on we'll probably break up each of the dozers individually but there's gonna be a lot more content on these to come um right now it's maybe march 16th and we are kind of just starting to get into maintaining that so i got some oil samples sent out you guys will see a really good video on that and hopefully we end that with getting it running really well and then working it a little bit um, and then over there, so my dad actually has the transmission torn down, him and the other guy, for the other 977. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think they're gonna have no problem uh, rebuilding that. And then the other engine for the one with the ROPS on it, uh, is actually, I put the head on it the other day. I'm probably weeks away from getting that running in my garage and then we'll be able to put that back in and, and get the 977. So we're gonna have a lot going on. Um, I gotta get this stuff in my driveway somehow. Lisa and I need a bigger house, but it should be a fun summer. Last summer we had uh, nothing big running, and this summer we've already got a lot of big stuff running. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I will talk to you next time. Probably should have brought the guy a shovel. <laughs>
It's actually not mud on the crowbar. I was a little constipated <laughs> this morning.